And so today I will show you the basic steps uh, for field emission gun SEM. I will show you how to initialize the server, how to get access to the microscope control, then how to load your sample, uh, prepare the column for the operation, turn on the beam, optimize the image, save it, and then go to high resolution mode if you need to do it, and again, how to optimize it at the end, uh, how to prepare the microscope for the next user, meaning uh, removing your sample and pumping the, the chamber to high vacuum. The first thing you need to log in into your Windows account, just type your username, password, and then find this icon, XT Microscope Server, and open it. You will see this window. The only difference in your uh, user account will be that you won't have this shutdown system button. Other than this, everything should be the same. If you click this, you will uh, either expand or pull back the, this advanced options. Now, pay attention that these three dots are green. Once they are green, you can start the server uh, just by pressing this start button. And then the status of all these components will change going through all these colors. When all of them are green, the system is red. You need to keep this server open, but you can minimize it by cl double click on this blue band area. And it will just create this small menu tab here. This window is to allow you to use the user interface. You have to type again your username and password. And then you will have the control of the user interface. The first thing which you will be asked is whether you want to initialize the stage. And typically you should do it. If you will need rotation of the sample, you should do it with rotation. If you don't, and I, I really don't need to do it, so I will do it now without rotation. So just uncheck this box and, and confirm this process. Then what you will see here in this quad, this is the view from the chamber. It shows that the stage goes through some checking points. You will see that checks all the drives, moves to the current positions, and gets oriented. Once this is done, the system will know exactly what's the coordinates of your samples and the stage. You have to do it, otherwise you will not be able to move the stage. So the, you will only be able to look at the sample exactly in, in one spot, which is very uh, limited ability. So you have to do this step. Okay, so now you need to vent the chamber and load your sample for the analysis. To do this, first thing, make sure that you open nitrogen gas tank. To vent the chamber, you have to make sure that you have gas flowing to the, to the system. So open the main valve, make sure that you still have some nitrogen in the tank, make sure that this valve is open and that the pressure around this uh, black mark here on the, on the regulator. Now you just press the vent button and confirm that you really want to vent the chamber. You have to wait a couple minutes for the process to end. At the bottom here you will see that the pressure increases, the vacuum uh, deteriorates and this icon normally when the system is in full operation should be in green color right now it's in orange indicating that the system is bending to verify that the system has uh, that the chamber has been vented just try to open the door slide it gently if it's vented it should just move uh, without any problem if it's still under vacuum you will not be able to open it if there is a sample, you need to remove it. I, I actually, right now I have a standard sample, so to take it out, I just loosen this screw using this screwdriver. Uh, remove uh, this uh, aluminum strap, and then the whole post uh, where you can have up to three samples. Now I need to take this screwdriver, this wrench, and just loosen this screw here.
Now I put back my standard sample and we'll take one of these one these samples and load it into the system. So first make sure that the sample is secured but it's a little bit higher uh, so it looks should look like this approximately like this then uh, and you can put additional two samples if you have them one here and one here so you can have up to three of this size samples or one big big one like this one now uh, move it, put it back, uh, take your aluminum uh, stuff and tighten it to secure your, your stage. Now to check that the height is correct, there's a special tool to do this. You should, your surface should be almost touching the top surface of this door, then we know it's very close to 3 mm. And then you can, you will be able to do, uh, you will be able to do imaging in the immersion mode. So once this is done, you are ready to close the chamber, close the door and start pumping the system. Now, one important thing to remember is that this is a, uh, this is a chamber where we will have high vacuum. Uh, the chamber is sealed by this rubber, black rubber o-ring around the door. So it's very important that there are no, no uh, dirt pieces nor hairs or nothing on this o-ring and also that your door is tightly uh, attached to the o-ring. So before you press the pump button, make sure that you hold the door uh, initial just for a few seconds and then start pumping. You should hear the valve closing and the system should start pumping. After a few seconds the door is already uh, tightly closed. You cannot open it anymore and the, the pumping system that is the pumping process has started. Uh, after the pumping begins, you have about three minutes. This is a good time to close this valve again and, uh, to, to save nitrogen. And you can also close this one. So now during the pumping, you will notice that this chamber pressure decreases. The vacuum will improve. You have to wait till it's almost in 10 to the minus fifth range and the, the best indication is uh, when this icon changes from orange to green, you are able to start high tension and, and start using the, the SEM. After about two, three minutes, you should have this in low 10 to the minus four or high 10 to the minus fifth range. Of course, the gun pressure will be, will be much lower, 10 to the minus nine or 10 to the minus 10. Your immediate indication is the color of this icon. If it's fully green, it means that the microscope is ready for the use. Now you are ready to turn on the high voltage. I would recommend to start with 10 kilovolts. You can also select other voltages, starting from 500 volts, which is very difficult to use, to 30 kilovolts. But we can start with 10 kilovolts. Spot size of a tree is probably a good one to start as well, but you, you have a, a lot of options too. The smaller the number, less intensity you will have, so don't go to too low number. On the other hand, higher the number means resolution is worse, so don't go to sick because resolution will be very poor. So three is a good number to start. Once you are ready, you selected your high voltage value and spot size, you can click high voltage button and it should turn yellow, which means the high voltage has been applied. Now your screen is divided into four components. Right now in 
In this one, you will always see the view from the chamber with infrared camera. Okay, so we will use this area for imaging. And now, this is a stop frame. To have a live image, you need to click the pause button. Here, you will see a live image right now, and I can even move the sample, as you can see. Uh, whenever I click, th this area goes to the center. But now, what you see here, uh, really depends on what detector have you selected. For most of the work, we should select this detector, which is the secondary electron detector. We have an additional detector, but this needs to be mechanically inserted. It's only available if you prepare the chamber. If you don't see anything, then uh, there is something wrong with this detector selection. So make sure that you have this one, and then you should see this kind of an image. By pressing F5 button, you can go to four area view to single area view, which at this moment can be useful. Now, you want to find your sample first, lower the magnification. You can use the minus button on your keyboard, and it will and go all the way down. This is the, the lowest magnification you can get, with, which is 62x. Now, let's make sure that this is our sample. Okay, the, it looks like the sample is really here. So we will select uh, this area and we'll try to image it. To increase the magnification, press plus button. Uh, every time you press it, the magnification will increase twice. Now, initially the image will be uh, out of focus, maybe very dark. Uh, but this is where you need to align it or, or adjust it. So first thing is to hit this auto contrast brightness button here. It will equalize your contrast. Now you can see a little bit more. Second thing, you want to image decent magnification. I have 2000 right now, but it, you can maybe even do it at 1000 or slightly higher. Around 1000, few thousand will be okay. Uh, focus the image. For focusing, uh, press the right button on your mouse and just scroll right or to the left until you start to see that this image is uh, in a better focus. It still won't be ideal, but uh, we want to be close enough to, to, do the, uh, to go to the next step. So let's say this is close enough. Now there is a very important step. You need to link your working distance to the focal length. You can do it by clicking this icon where right now we have the question mark. And you can see if you just hang over this button, it says link Z to focal working distance. So just once you are in focus or close to being in focus, you can click this button and then the question mark disappears. Now your, uh, your Z, your height, is linked to the focal working distance. Here you will see that your working distance right now is 15.8 millimeters. And this is really far away from the optimal working distance. Optimal working distance should be five millimeters, which means we need to move our sample up by 10.8 millimeters. To do this, press again F5 button and have a good view on the chamber because you don't want to hit your sample against the, the pole piece. So that it's always good to, to check what's going on with the sample. Now, when you already link your uh, height to the focal working distance, to move to the five millimeter mark, the easiest way is to go to the navigation menu. Right now we are in the beam control menu. There are five menus here. Beam control, detectors, navigation, processing, and alignment. So go to the third one, the navigation menu, and you will see these controls right now. One, for example, here in the stage, there is a menu which shows a map, which will help you. You can store even location. If you have many samples, you can, for each of them, store the location and then automatically go to this location. So this is a very useful feature. But right now we, we want to uh, coordinate a uh, page, and instead of 
uh, right now a Z height is at 15.75 or 15.8. Type 5 here and then press go. You will see that the stage is moving up. We reached the limit, it's 5.5 millimeter, but this is good enough. Between six and four, this is a good working distance. After you set up your height right and you have your working distance at five and link to the focal length, you can now work on getting a good image for this, uh, press again F5 and go to the large view. Now you can use this icon here, this tool here, which is reduced area tool. This will produce a small window and only this small window will be a live image, which is perfect for alignment. It has a very high refresh rate, so it reacts very quickly to whatever you do. First thing you need to focus so, again, press the right button on your mouse and just scroll to the side and try to get the best focus possible, let's say right now. If you press this, this button again, you will see, of course, the live view of all this. And this is a decent, at this magnification, 2000x, is, you will probably get a decent image. However, if you go to higher magnification, if you press plus button on your keyboard, you can increase the magnification twice. For example, this is four. Uh, the image starts to have show some, some issues. Maybe at this magnification, we still don't see this. Uh, so let's, let's increase by additional factor of two. So if you focus, you will see that there, is, there starts to be elongation in this direction if you move the mouse in one direction and elongation in this direction when you move the mouse on this side. So you see there is elongation in this side or in this direction, which is a clear indication that we have objective lens astigmatism, which we need to correct. Now, to correct the astigmatism, there is an instruction here on this node. You can read it if you forget, but hold the shift button and then press the right button on your mouse and then um, move again to get the best focus. And you move right to left and also up, uh, down and up. So try to focus as best as you can. Then uh, release the shift button and try to focus, improve the focusing. So if you think this is the best focusing, now uh, do the same astigmatis correction. Hold the shift button and move uh, left to right until you think it's it's a best focus and up to down or either down or up uh, until you think it's a best focus. And again, release the shift button and try to refocus. Right now you can see that we don't see this elongation anymore. It, this, the image just is out of focus, but there is no elongation in any direction. And that's what you want to get. And if you see this, it means that you remove the astigmatis or uh, majority of it. So with this, you are pretty much ready to take the the image, if let's say the magnification 8000, which we have right now, is what you are looking for, then you just press this button, which will slow down the refresh. And I recommend using a six microsecond. And then um, make sure that you press the pause button, then it will stop at the end. So if the image is too noisy, you can do this, uh, you can release the pause button and maybe record it at 12 microseconds. And then of course wh while this is scanning, make sure that you press the pause button because this will stop. After you do this, you can save your image. Give the sample name, the parameters. I like to add the voltage, the spot size, the magnification. 
but it's your image, you decide what you put it, but you will always on your image have this, this information anyway. But this is a good way to put it into the name of the file, then you know what's exactly in this file. This is so-called field-free mode or low magnification mode, and for most applications it will be sufficient. However, if you have very tiny details, very small features, you, you may want to use immersion mode, which will allow you to take images at very high magnifications, let's say 100,000 X or even higher. I will now show you how to do this, uh, how to use this immersion mode. First thing, start acquire live image again. If you press this one, it will be a fast acquisition. Whenever you press this one, you will see that this icon changes from from live, which is this, to average, which is this. This will give you a, a better quality. However, it's always, if your sample drifts or moves, you will have some problems with getting sharp images. So you can use live image and maybe increase the, the acquisition time. So now to switch to the immersion mode, first of all, you need to be in magnifications at least 5,000 or higher, so we are at 8,000 right now, which should be okay. Go to the immersion mode. The image will be out of focus, but it should be relatively close. So try just to focus slightly and you should see the image. Now, increase the magnification. This mode is designed for high magnification. You start with low magnification, and, but then uh, don't be afraid to go to higher magnification, but make sure that you focus the image all the way, I mean, at every step, and also that you remove the astigmatis, because there will be astigmatis. Your high resolution imaging will also depend on the quality of the sample. And some samples are easy to, like metal samples will be much easier for this mode. Other samples may be difficult. This is some kind of a powder sample and this may be problematic. So we may not go to very high magnification. We have 60,000 right now. But with good sample, we definitely can go much better. If you don't see too much, you may try to increase the spot size. Uh, let's see how this image turns on. Let's go to maybe 12. Again, this sample may not be ideal for this mode. It's pretty washed out. But with right sample, it should work much better. And again, once you collect this image, you just save it again in your folder. So this is about the immersion mode. If, if you struggle with it, when you, especially when you use in, uh, for the first or second time, let me know, I will try to help you. Again, most of the things we will be able to, to do in the regular mode, which is much easier to operate. When you switch back and forth between these two modes, you may notice that the astigmatis shows up, so then you just make sure that you remove it. That's most of the things you need to know. Of course, you, you can look at different areas of your sample. Wherever you click, like if I click in this area, this area will be brought 
automatically to the center of the image. So we'll just one more thing which is important to know if you have a low intensity of your beam make sure that you check this crossover just click on the crossover button you should see this bright disk and it should be centered around this cross if it's too much off center you can just use this control and, and center it and at every spot size and every voltage it will be at a, in different locations for example if we reduce the spot size 3 it's, you can see it's off center now so we need to correct it now 3.5 should be should be as it is and then once you are good you, it looks center just double uh, click again crossover and you will go to the image after you are done you get your images make sure that you click again f5 and switch to this view then uh, next thing you need to do is to turn off high tension just click hv button it should change color from yellow to gray and, and you are ready to remove your sample close the chamber pump it log off and leave it for the next user so to remove your sample you need to vent the chamber for this make sure that you open the tank and make sure that this valve is open as well to start the venting just, uh, again press the vent button and and confirm that you really want to do this and then you have to wait about two minutes for the chamber to vent and also what you will notice is that the stage goes back to the lowest position once the chamber has been vented, you can open it, uh, just most uh, gently the door, so you have enough access to your stage. Loosen this screw again. I remove this part. Always remember to wear gloves, when, especially whenever you work inside the chamber. Now, loosen the screw uh, and just take your sample and put it to the stage. Now, this you should always go back to the chamber. Secure. So now you can close the door, hold it, and start the pump. And after just initial second or two, it should be ready. After you close the chamber, start to pump it. Just close this valve. And so wait until your pressure is in high 10 to the minus 5th and especially when, until you see this icon turning green again. This means that the system is under good vacuum and this is a, a moment where you can end your work. For this double click now here to uh, maximize the view of this server controller. This is a window which will open, so you have to stop the server. So before, at the beginning, we started the server, now we will stop it. Just click stop button and wait for this dot to change to stopped, which is gray color. The server is still running, but it's, it's stopping right now. When it says stop, you are okay to close this icon and then log out of your account, which just by pressing shut 
down it, it will open this this window make sure that you select log off not shut down but but log off and then continue what I just showed you is a basic operation of this microscope if at any stage you encounter problems uh, you can look for me in room 010 or send me an email so don't hesitate to contact me with any questions or issues